Hi. Uh, good morning, everyone. So, <coughs> uh, this is a brief lecture of this basic engineering and science. Uh, in our earlier, we have discussed uh, around four lectures. We all have already taken. Right. This is a fifth lecture, and we will see today mass density and mass weight and density these terms in details we will see in the today's lectures so the students those are not subscribed the channel please subscribe hit the like button and share with your friends okay so so that i will get you a very good motivate also i will try to provide you better and better <coughs> videos okay so let me start so the today's session is on mass weight and density so, so first we will discuss what the mass is see now the mass is the amount of matter in the body right mass and weight are totally different okay mass is measured in kg and weight is measured in uh, newtons right so the, so weight is actually force but mass is not a force okay it's the amount of matter inside the body how much amount of the matter or the atoms molecules how much that thing is discussed by this matter the SI unit that is a standard a, 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 a international standard unit for this is kg cgs is in grams and fs is a pound okay it's a british system so now moving to the next that is the weight part okay see here <laughs> now the, everybody is familiar with this formula right it's a newton's law it is called newton's law of gravitation this is what newton's newton's law of gravitation or the rather it's a universal law right newton's universal law of gravitation okay it is a universal because it is it is proven everywhere okay in any masses suppose if I take a two mass right suppose here uh, uh, let me give you example this is a two masses this is one mass right and this is another what is telling that this force always attracted in nature right so this force this mass and this yes here there is a no attraction between these two bodies why because this value of g which is a gravitational constant universal gravitational constant which is very very less so this is not they are not attracting just yes, they are little bit very small amount they are attracting there is always attraction between two masses okay there will be not repulsion there is always attraction and this is what this law is telling okay so the value here the f that is a force of attraction between these two masses is equal to g m1 m1 is the mass of one object so you can take planet also okay big masses also you can take so m1 m2 divided by r2 r uh, sorry r square r is the distance between these two masses this mass is one and this is a mass two okay now moving to the next part that is after understanding that newton's law of gravitation okay you should know that first okay so how this law is proven how it is i uh, that much detail you need not go right now right so the whatever necessary things i will try to explain you here now the concept of weight okay the mass concept is over now the weight concept see weight the force which is equal to this thing we have seen right the force is equal to g m1 m2 divided by r square right so this is a uh, newton's law this is what is called newton's law of gravitation right so suppose if i am standing here and i have a 50 kg of mass right and this is the on this is the earth see on the center of the earth and the center of me okay you have to calculate the mass but compared to the distance see the radius of the earth you know it's around nearly equal to it is 6400 kilometer right so compared to this i will take directly r this r i will take because one meter it doesn't depict in comparison with this 6400 kilometers right <coughs> so i will take this and i will take this distance and i will calculate the force between me and this center of the earth right so the f is equal to g 
weight is just a pulling force right that thing we should keep it in mind okay and mass is it's not a pulling force in mass see we will see the difference between mass and weight in the network upcoming slide okay so the mass remains same everywhere but the weight doesn't because see the, as the acceleration due to gravity g value right the weight is w is mg right so this g value acceleration due to gravity on the earth is different on the moon if you want it's almost one sixth of this on this earth right so the weight also weight changes if you you feel light whenever it goes to moon okay around so one sixth per one sixth part okay you will feeling less uh, we will feeling light okay so 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 if this here the value of cr g cr uh, f is equal to g this is my weight this is the mass of the earth right so the g is equal to g m upon r square okay and this is how the relation between this g and this g you understood this so this g is this g into m divided by r square this is what the value of the g so from this i can calculate uh, right here that is f force is equal to m g like this right i can write right so here what the m is m is 50 kg and the remaining term g m r square is the acceleration this g is where where g is acceleration acceleration due to gravity right this is what the g and this is the radius of the earth right so it's approximate 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 radius of earth okay i think uh, most of the things clear to you guys right if you have any doubts please ask put in the comments most of the students are not the keeping doubts as it is right you are not putting if you put the doubts right if you ask the doubts then it will be very easy for you as well as me right whether i am teaching is in the right direction or not that thing i will come to know right so please put in the comments if you have any doubts now see this slide represents the difference in mass and weight right first of all i request you all guys please read this then i will understand okay see so the so the first i think you i hope you guys the read is okay the first is mass is the quantity of matter it means the amount of matter, how much quantity the matter in the body regardless of its volume or of its force acting on it right so it's it mass has no relation how much amount of force acting on it or how much volume of that right <laughs> the only it's represent the quantity whereas weight is the measurement of the gravitational force acting on the object right so whenever there is a gravitational force acting on the weight, that is what the measurement of the weight means gravitational force comes in picture in weight right so let me highlight this here so weight is a gravitational force right now the next uh, after the next which is the next difference the mass is always constant at any place and any time right the mass see how the mass will degrade right the mass conservation law also we know so the mass remains constant but the weight its weight doesn't like that weight depends on place to place means the weight of the object depends on gravity at that place see on the earth the gravity is 9.81 meter per second square if you go to the moon it's almost one sixth of this as in on earth right so so this is what right this is the uh, uh, weight of the object depends on the gravity at that place 
Mass means at different places the gravity is different. So on the, on the, if you move to the other planet, right, or inside the Earth, everything we will see in detail how the gravity changes. So the mass, the third is the mass coming to the third point. Mass is expressed in kilograms, right? So the mass is in kilogram, grams, and milligrams, right? Whereas weight is expressed in newtons in honor of that scientist, right? As weight is a force, right? So, any uh, doubt up till now? I hope you guys have everything clear, right? Uh, so, now coming to the next point that is mass is measured using lever balance, right? And weight is measured using a spring balance. It is a simple lever, right? So whenever you visit to take a um, vegetables, right, on the shop, this lever machine is there, right? So with the help of that lever machine, you will maintain the mass actually. The weight is using a spring balance. So the last and which is very important, it is a scalar quantity, right? In which direction it's acting, it doesn't matter. Whereas weight has a vector. Right, it is a base quantity and it is a derived quantity. Okay, the next the variation of the this g, right? So the g which is the acceleration due to gravity, which is responsible for creating the gravitational force, right? The g. How it g, this g changes with depth that we will discuss. See here, this is our earth, okay. Our mother earth is looking like this, and <clears throat> suppose if I kept a mass m here and the depth is this much amount of depth is okay if i go inside here right uh, see here what this figure is see the g, here we know the value of the g is 9 point right it is a 9.81 meter per second square at this on the surface of the earth right it is on pole exactly uh, this is a equator and this is a pole right so see we will see it later on the pole and, and the equator the g value is again changing how it will change we will see in the nav next so here if i go inside depth inside the earth d times okay this is the distance then we have given one formula that is what the g dash will be here okay definitely there will be change in this g dash right so the dj this g dash this is acceleration due to gravity at depth d inside the earth which is equal to g1 minus d by r right so the dj is gravitational acceleration at depth d depth at d depth right suppose this d is equal to r at this place if i put d equal to r here and this r okay so the acceleration due to gravity at the center g will be zero right so if i put at the center of that d equal to r Okay, now moving to the variation in acceleration, uh, gravitational acceleration with weight, which sorry with height. If I change the height, right? So see here it is a by we are going by depth, right? So inside the earth we are going here we are moving away from the earth. So here this is a g. See how this formula changes. It is a g dash equal to g one minus two h upon r. So you have, you should have to keep in mind. Okay, this formulas which are very important right so it is a 1 minus d by r and the difference is it is a 1 minus h by r this is how we will calculate the acceleration due to the gravity now moving to the density part right so what the density is density is mass per unit volume how much amount of the mass mass we have discussed right volume with this thing you know so density is equal to mass upon volume so the unit of this is that is a kg per meter cube right and again coming to the relative density or specific density see in the relative density uh, how much the, uh, we will feel the heaviness in order to feel the heaviness this relative density is calculated right i think i hope you understood this density first right suppose if i take the block of steel right suppose this is a steel block and one more block I will take of same size, same volume, right? This is of wooden. So the density of this, this is a steel, right? 
and this is of mole of, of wood <coughs> so the steel density is higher right compared to this this density is low right so it is a lighter and it is a heavier right why this is so see the inter at in the material science you might have studied this the atomic the reason behind this why the density is more the arrangement of the atoms which is in a very crystal in a crystal at this which is very perfect arrangement of the atoms whereas here there is a not that much smooth arrangement of atoms like crystal right that's why the density of the steel is higher than the density of the wood so coming to the relative density relative density see this is a standard density the density of the water standard density of the water is 1000 kg per meter cube what this means in in the in a box of uh, in a single meter cube box okay one by one by one like this meter cube box 1000 kg of water you can store means the mass of the water you can store that is a 1000 kg right so finding out the relative density that is s is equal to the density of the liquid which you have to measure right the relative density with respect to standard this is what the water we are taking as a standard suppose i have to measure the density of the mercury we know, i know the density of the mercury is 13.6 so the relative density if i have to calculate then it will comes the density of this mercury to the water density so it is coming 10.6 right i hope you understood this so now the variation of the g by rotation of the earth right we have seen in the earlier two, two uh, that is by changing the depth how how this by changing the depth right this is what the relation how the g changes this is the variation in gravitational acceleration with height how it changes that thing also we have seen now we will see because of the rotation of the earth okay how the density changes see here suppose i am standing here right and so see, this is what the pole, right? Pole means this this line is a pole, and this is the equator, right? So that the equator I will take theta is equal to zero degree, and here at pole it is a ninety degree. So the net force, suppose because of the rotation of the earth, right? See here, this is what the r from this point to this point. At this place, any general point I am taking, right? So the acceleration due to gravity that is mg uh, the mg always act in this direction right this is the direction of the mg of this weight so, so why because of the rotation right this is what the rotation of the earth right around in the axis of the pole this one force which is called centrifugal force right which always act away from this right the the, the uh, how much amount this acts that is m r omega square if I resolve this, right, this this is a theta, and in this direction, okay, it is a cos theta, yeah, mar omega square cos theta. So the net force acting on this mass, so the net force towards the center, right, which is equal to m g dash, right, equal to m g plus m mar omega square. Yeah, will get cancelled, and remaining this is will be in the remaining thing, right. So the because of the rotation of the earth, there is a variation in the acceleration. See here at on the pole this r will be zero on here right and at this equator the r will be maximum right so r is zero at this place so if r is zero then this term goes to zero means as so at the pole or at the equator if theta is equal to zero right so that way that kind that time it is value uh, g dash is equal to g minus r omega square this is a value and at the pole if theta is 90 degree g is equal to g i hope you guys understood this everything what i uh, learned to you right so if you have any doubts please ask hopefully there will not be any doubts i kept okay now i think i hope you understand the variation of the g because of rotation right now state of the matter we will see see there are actually there are four state of matter there are one more for you fifth state of matter but it's not that much relevant to our syllabus right so the we are very familiar with this first three state of matter that is liquid gas and a solid right so the plasma is whenever we reach a certain height right means 
when we are moving away from the our earth's atmosphere then we will we we this is one state of the matter the which is plasma right <laughs> these are the th four states of matters there is one more state of matter but it's not uh, required okay to study that so now moving to the pressure see the pressure is a normal force okay per unit area this normal word is very important pressure always act normal suppose this is this is a sphere right so if i ask you see the pressure always acts normal to this curvature right so the, the word normal is very important like this this is a normal force normal okay so the pressure is always acts normally so this is also a normal force this suppose see here suppose on the flat body i apply in pressure right so see here suppose this much area and like this i am applying a pressure right so i need to take this normal force which i am acting in all places right like this okay and you have to measure the area how we will measure where that pressure is acting that is on this area right this area the pressure is acting so you have to take that area and the normal force so the pressure is the normal force per area now the uh, coming to the assignment of the pressure is that is a newton per meter square area. so in the honor of this pascal um, scientist the unit of the pressure is right so it is a newton per meter square now atmospheric pressure see this atmospheric pressure is everywhere okay the so whatever the air molecules around us we are exerting pressure in all direction with us right so the the value of this atmospheric pressure is 100 uh, 1 1.3 kilopascal <laughs> and it is 101.3 into 10 raised to 3 pascal right so if one bar right so this is what the conversion one bar is equivalent to 10 raised to 5 pascal so the one atmospheric is approximately equal to one bar so again how we will measure the pressure atmospheric pressure there are see the pressure this is what the atmospheric pressure so with the help of the barometer we will measure the atmospheric pressure now <coughs> sorry <coughs> now <coughs> Now at point A, suppose I have to calculate the pressure at point A and at point B. Suppose, see, this is what the free surface, right? So how the free surface is indicating like this, right? This is, this is a free surface, right? The free surface of the liquid. See what the definition behind the free surface is, wherever there is an interface, see, here there is a air molecules and here it is a liquid molecules, right? Uh, whenever wherever there is a separation between these two and creating one interface that is called free surface right so this is a free surface in the fluid mechanics you will study this you need not worry that much but just now I, t I told you okay you should know how what the free surface so on this free surface see there is a a and b a at point a and b pressure is same and it is a atmospheric pressure right suppose if i reach below that right at a certain height below inside the liquid right so the pressure changes right so the pressure at point p is atmospheric see the pressure here also plus this pressure the liquid column which carrying on this right which is a rho plus rho g h a so this is how we can calculate the pressure as you move deeper and deeper goes deeper and deeper you will the pressure will be high right so everybody's come question you know somebody's question comes in mind how the if the pressure is very high in the sea level right so how the fishes are survived see the fishes has uh, fishes has ability to take that much pressure level they they inhale that pressure and uh, and leave that okay whenever they go reaches so this is how they survive because of the high pressure the, the the human can't do this right human but the fishes can do this and if they can survive at very deep level in the sea also right i hope you understand so the pressure here as this height is less right according to this formula how this comes you know not me you not need no body you just atmospheric pressure is here okay plus the height rho gh 
how this comes hydro this is comes from hydrostatic law okay where rho is the density and g is the acceleration due to gravity now at same this this slide telling us at same horizontal level this horizontal level right this is the horizontal level so irrespective of the shape of this flask at same horizontal at every point the pressure at pressure at at, at means this is as this is same so the pressure at point a right at same horizontal level right at same horizontal level the pressure at point a equal to b equal to c irrespective of this this shape of this flask may be anything but at that horizontal level it is showing the same now coming to the now the, the I, this is what the different solution right this is this is a sugar solution and this is water right so so that now see now the density is different right so the density of the sugar this is water so if i talk the density of this water it is a 1000 kg per meter cube and the sugar solution density is more than that right so because of this density the pressure at point a and point b will be different it's not same even though they are at a horizontal level but right because of the density difference the pressure is different now this is a very very interesting that is archimedes principle archimedes principle just in a, this is what the archimedes principle that is buoyant force is equal to weight of displaced fluid whatever the see whenever you something thrown inside the liquid right that plus the weight is acting in downward direction at the same time there is one buoyant force which is vertically or acting upward and that buoyant force the value of that buoyant force is equal to weight of that displaced fluid see how much suppose this is a this this is cube right this is a cube means all sides are equal right so or any rectangular shape you can a b c like this you can assume right so the volume volume of this is volume of cuboid which is equal to a into b into c this is the volume of this cuboid right so the whatever the fluid displaced weight of the fluid displaced because of this cube okay that is what the buoyant that much amount of buoyant force which is acting vertically upward direction that's why see because of this buoyant force we we feel lighter whenever we enter inside the water right so the buoyancy force is acting and the value of that is equal to weight of that fluid displacer okay this is what the, the action is now the how we will calculate this fb is equal to mass this is again force mass into g right so this mass that is rho into v so this is a v is the volume of this cuboid right that is a into b into c and rho is the density of this liquid right which is displaced you understood this this liquid density and v is the uh, this volume of this cuboid okay g is the acceleration due to gravity this is the archimedes principle <clears throat> okay I hope you guys understanding everything. If you have any doubts, please ask. Okay. Now see here one. Whenever when the body sinks and when it floats, that thing this figure tries with the help of this figure, I am trying to illustrate or trying to explain you guys. So, so the here the see whenever there is a weight is greater than this buoyant force, the body will sink definitely. The net force will be in downward direction though. Body will reach down. Okay, whenever the weight is less than your B, right? That time what happen? The body will float again. And whenever W is your B, this will be a case of floating body floating. Now relative density. Relative density of a solid body first we will discuss, which is denser than the water, right? 
so the weight how we will calculate the relative density that is the weight of the body in the air to the weight loss inside the water right that is what the relative density now the weight of the iron piece is 1 kg of in the air and 133 kg of in the water find the specific gravity so 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 what in the air okay the weight is that is 160 right and <coughs> And 133 will be in the water. So the relative density is 160 upon 60 minus as per formula. Now moving to the next question at how deep the value of the gravitational acceleration will be half of the gravitational acceleration. See here. At see here at it means almost when you reaches at the radius half the radius of the earth, right? So this is the answer for you. So these are the question. Please take a snapshot of this. These are the not that much difficult questions, simple questions. Are. Now, relative density of the soil which is lighter than the water. Okay, see. Uh, which is lighter than water so that, that which is lighter than the water then how we will calculate that so here this is the spring weight machine okay with the help of this weight first you have to calculate the weight in the of that solid in the air right and the second thing you have to calculate the weight of that in the air weight in uh, w2 is a weight it is not in the air, right? So it is weight in the liquid or water. Okay. So the relative density will be W1 upon W1 minus W2. So weight of the solid in the air. And W1 minus W2 is the loss of solid. Okay. See here, this string is calculating the W2, right? And this will calculate the W1. Okay, and W1 is always lesser and the difference between this is what the loss of the whole solid, right? So this is the water. So question, you can directly solve the question with the help of that formula. Just now we have seen now the relative density of solid which is lighter. So I see sometimes what happen, Some suppose I have taken a wax which is lighter than the water. That time what you have to do? Uh, you have to just do an idea right first uh, you have to sink the weight okay you have to take the weight which is uh, this weight is let me dark this okay this is a solid weight okay it's a metallic piece you have to take it can easily dip inside the water right now take the weight of that inside the water and take it as w1 and the weight of the core for wax in air and sink here I have to find out the relative density of this wax that time you have to do this exercise so the W2 will be weight of the cork wax in the air and sinker in the water okay so you have to take this is W1 weight reading whatever shows this is the W2 this is W1 this is the W2 and this will be W3 in the W3 C here the here wax is attached to this solid block right so it can easily now dip inside okay earlier the wax will not it will flow directly so we can't take the relative density of this wax but with the help of this we can take the relative density now the formula is the weight of the wax in here to the loss of weight in water right so this is how with the help of this you can find easily right let me highlight this this is the relative density okay these are the aptitude questions also these are very interesting and aptitude questions are also so moving to the question questions are now very simple so i will know i will not discuss more about these questions because you just take a screenshot if you are not able to solve please put in a comment i will explain and i will solve for you guys also no problem now the relative density of liquid 
so if I have to find out the density of the liquid see liquid which relative density we need to find this is that liquid what you have to do for this suppose I have to find the liquid density of this first take a metal metal piece and take a weight of this which is W1 count it has and then it then you have to pour that inside the water then take a this is a liquid okay water is this is liquid and then liquid in which density suppose I have to calculate the density of the oil suppose this is oil right so I have to calculate the relative density of this oil first you have to do this process right this will be take a reading of W1 this is W2 and W3 right this will be the oil or any other liquid which my interest to calculate of mm, the uh, relative density right so this is a formula c w1 minus w3 divided by w1 minus w3 right so the loss of the weight in liquid to the loss of weight in solid right so moving to the Bernoulli's principle right so this principle is based on these all topics are related to each other okay so in detail whenever you move or you proceed in your academic or in a higher education this Bernoulli's principle you will get around 6 to 5 lectures or around 5 to 5 hours you can put in but in short I try to explain it here so this principle is based on the energy conservation law okay means energy the price total energy right the pressure energy suppose you see the, the, some water or any liquid is flowing inside this and these are the streamlines of the liquid if I take a two points along any streamline right on this streamline and these are the two points right with the this is my reference reference right uh, uh, from the, this reference height okay h1 h2 uh, right so I will calculate the pressure energy at point 1 what this principle tells the energy at point 1 which is the total energy at point 1 total you have to talk about total because there are three kinds of energy one is pressure energy other is potential energy and third is kinetic energy so the at point 1 the total energy is equal to the total energy at point 1 what this statement telling suppose if P1 raises then this may here the P1 is high right but maybe see the h1 that is h1 is high here right compared to this at that place the pressure is less okay or kinetic energy is less but the total energy remains constant at this point and this point right so this is what the Bernoulli equation right so the application of Bernoulli equation using the venturi meter to measure the flow and the barometer is also used to measure the atmospheric pressure okay so, the, so this is a buoyant force which we just know buoyancy or buoyant force which we just know we have discussed this is a e of b which is buoyant force equal to mg of displaced fluid see the displaced fluid here okay so if body is floating then this will be the situation when the buoyant force equal to this weight right so so see here um, the the snow uh, snow inside the ice inside the sea right it is floating why it is floating so it is a, a denser or lighter than the water right so that's why it is floating like this and that time this buoyant force is equal to weight of that displacement fluid so if the w weight of the body is more than this buoyant force then it will be sink right so this is a question now in front of you you can solve it easily right so you have to find out the relative density here so you can easily calculate now at the center of the earth what the value of the g see here at the center of the earth we already discussed right at the center of the value of the g will be zero right we know the formula what that is that is g dash is equal to g right one minus d upon r right so at the center of earth this d is equal to since this d is equal to r right if i put r here then i will get g dash is equal to 0 at this is at center of earth right 
so the value of the accretion due to gravity at the center of the earth is zero okay now <clears throat> now up till now any doubts for you guys i hope you understood about this mass density this is very simple now the next question in front of you the value of the gravitational acceleration see this okay the next question the gravitational acceleration is the highest value of the arc okay on the pole see on the poles the value of as this r tends to zero right so if this r goes to zero on the pole right so the value of g dash will be g on the poles okay then with this we stop for the today's class hopefully you understood most of the things right so in the next class we will discuss on levers and simple machines in this if you have any doubts please ask put in the comments and i request you guys please don't forget to subscribe the channel so actually most of the students are subscribed even though you give you may view it also but just to subscribe because in the future also <coughs> in the future also you will get better than this videos i'll try to deliver okay and then this will stop for the today's class thanks for watching once again like share and subscribe bye take care see you